So in this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of how you're going to build your house. And this isn't as sophisticated of a program as like a Google SketchUp or any other 3D application, but you can do a decent amount with it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need walls. So again, at the top of your menu is basically where you're going to live. I've got my exterior wall. I'm just going to put, I'm going to be really boring. And I'm going to drag my walls. And if you put them in the wrong spot, you can just highlight these little white buttons. They turn red and then you can change the height or you can change the width of your walls. It depends on what it is that you want to do. So now I'm going to rotate back around. I'm going to put in another wall. And notice it's designed where it automatically connects to the previous wall, which is kind of nice. So that way you don't have to worry about making sure all the heights are exactly the same as it will do that for you. And I'm going to go in, finish drawing my walls. And here's my last wall. Oops. last wall in there I am at a better angle <clears throat> so now I've got my walls in and in you can go in and you can right click on it or control click on a Mac and you can manually change the height of the wall and so if I wanted to I could change it to three and I can change all the walls at the same height so that way you can don't have to do everything individually okay. um, you can also again you can go in and you can add textures to them. So I'm going to make myself onto all my walls a little stone looking house. And you can't just add a window. You have to have the walls in place first. So now what we're going to want to do is I'm going to want to add in some windows. So you, uh, the little drop down menu, I'm going to put a window here. All right, I'm going to put another window over here. Let's say I'm going to make you the long skinny one. Um, you know, I'm going to go with a Minecraft house. I'm going to put a big window over here. Maybe I want to be looking out over the ocean. Um, and then a window over here. Little, little window over here. Oops. Um, little window here. There we go. Let's put it up here. And I'm going to drag them down a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have some windows. Uh, this side doesn't get any windows. And so now I want to have some doors because I want to be able to get in and out of my house. And there's a door. And we'll put another door on the other side. Okay. Now you can go in and you can also put in flooring if you wanted to. This is where it's useful to be able to rotate from above. All right, I'm gonna go down. Uh, there's my guy, he's inside of there. All right, so now I've got flooring on my kind of roof area. Okay, so now that's gonna kind of be this, my second story if I wanted to. And then if I wanted to put some flooring where my other guy is, I have to go inside, which is a little harder now. And then I can drag it and put it on the bottom floor, but it doesn't matter as much for that. But I did want to kind of have an attic space because that's going to help with heat flow a little bit. Now I get to pick my roof. There's all sorts of different roofs. You can draw your own roof if you want to, or you can decide to pick a different type of roof. So I'm going to pick a pyramid roof. And notice it automatically puts it to the right size of your house. And again, you can change it by clicking on those little uh, white balls. And they will highlight it red and you can move it. All right. So maybe if you're you know, living someplace where there's no snow, you don't have to worry about weight on your house. You make, make your roof flatter. right? And then, But maybe if you're living someplace where it snows a lot, you need more of an angle roof. Again, so you have to take that into account a little bit. So, you know, in Boston, we get a fair bit of snow. That's why I've never understood anyone who builds flat roof buildings in Boston is that it's 
all the snow, you have to go up and shovel the snow off the roof um, because not all the roofs are built to be able to withstand all that weight. All right, so this is a pretty, well, pretty ugly looking house. All right, I'm not going to put any interior walls inside of it, but you can do that because when you go to walls, you can go pick an interior wall if you want it to. Um, and then you can pick the different types of foundations. I'll just pick this slab foundation, but you can box it if you want to. Again, there's trade-offs. That box actually helps your uh, energy flow a little bit. It costs more, like everything else in that regard. Okay. Now, if you click on this little box here that's got looks like little arrows and dots on it, it just kind of shows you the rough size of your house and how big things are. You know, it may or may not be useful for you. Now, let's go over here and let's see how much my house costs. All right, <laughs> my house costs $219,000. All right, um, must be in a very good neighborhood, I suppose. I don't know who would buy this house. Um, okay, so, but now, one of the things that we want to look at is, you know, my, look at my energy costs. I have no solar panels, so everything is going to be powered via fossil fuel or some other source. So let's get some solar panels on it. Okay, so this is the south side of my house. The west is facing the left, so south is over here. Sometimes it can be a little hard to see, but you can always find the west at least, and then that will help you orient your compass. Okay, so now I am going to put on some solar panel racks. Let's put on one here, let's put on one here, let's put on one here. All right, and let's say I get a lot of sun in the morning. Oops. So one here, one here. Will another one fit? Oh, it will. <laughs> uh, they probably would never allow you to build something like that with our solar panel kind of jutting off onto the next roof. My guess is that goes against various regulations. But so now I've got some solar panels on my house. Okay, notice I didn't put them on the north side of my house because oftentimes that's not as uh, cost effective just because particularly if we're in Boston, right? The sun is mostly gonna be in our south. So now I can look at my cost again and it looks like my solar panels end up being about 12% of my total cost about thirty thousand dollars of the total cost right it's half the cost of the entire laying the foundation and building the foundation okay so now i've built my house and now what we can do is we can go through and do an analysis of heat flow and energy costs all right so looks like my energy that I need to run my house is three kilowatt hours, okay, per day, okay? And so my green is the energy that is generated via my solar panels. The net is how much energy that I am actually using. And so here's an interesting phenomenon that we've seen before. It's notice over here in the morning and over here at night, right? My energy use is much higher than what my solar panels can generate. This is assuming a perfectly happy sunny day, okay? And so I've got, looks like 7.1 hours of sunlight. So I get my energy boost up there, okay? All right, so that's not too bad. Is three kilowatt hours to run a house. Um, typical houses will anywhere run from 25 kilowatt hours per day to 100 kilowatt hours per day. It kind of depends on what the use case scenario is, right? If you have an electric car, those will draw a lot more kilowatt hours per day or things like that. All right. So what our job is to do in the building of our house is we're going to build a house and you can build it anywhere you want. You can build the first one in your hometown or where you are right now and then take that house and put it in some other part of the world maybe some place that you visited or some place you would like to visit and again to do that you just go over here and you can pick a drop down menu and they've got most cities um, or general areas that you would want to build a house into or where you might be able to go like if you wanted to go off to spain all right spain i get 7.3 hours 
Oh, let's see. This is May. I have it in March. So let's go far south. Oh, how about Darwin, Australia? All right. 6.7 hours. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's getting the wrong time of the season for them. Um, how about, oh, Qatar, <clears throat> eight hours. But look at the temperature, 28 degrees Celsius. So you're going to end up spending a bit more energy on cooling. So those are some of the questions that we're going to want to look at um, in terms of having our house get built. Okay. Now, last thing before I leave is if you want to go explore more, it has actually a fair bit of tutorials built in. So you can go in and if I click on, I'm going to say, don't say my changes to my lovely house, is it will walk you through comparing a bigger house and a smaller house um, type of scenario. Okay. Uh, so particularly on how much solar energy that you can use, how much heat it uses, and you can manipulate the installations, and then you do a side-by-side -side comparison with uh, Energy 3D. We're in, that is less of interest to us, I think, is what we're interested in. So we're going to have some fun, play around with the house week one. Then what we'll do in week two is have you guys go systematically build a house and then compare it. Uh, from one area of the country to another area of the country.